So hi, and welcome to this new BearNet webinar about all IP. My name is uh, Jean-Yves Ambroise, and I'm the head of business development here at BearNet. And today I'm going to tell you a bit about the all IP trend that is happening all over Europe. So as you know, lots of countries are switching to all IP, meaning that the historical providers are getting rid of their old telephone communication network, the PSTN, and they want to get rid of all those old technology and switch everything to IP. So it creates lots of changes on the telecommunication network and the question is what are the consequences? Beernet is a manufacturer of voice over IP gateways and we have a lot of experience in those things because we try thanks to our solutions to connect different technologies that are that are not compatible with each other. This is very important this, in this all IP transformation. Therefore, uh, we have lots of questions and inquiries from end clients that are a bit scared, they're not sure of what's going to happen, and they come to us and ask us a lot of questions. So my idea during this webinar was to gather all those questions that they have and share them with you so that uh, as integrators, you have contact with the end customer and you can reassure the end customers and tell them, don't worry, all IP is a big change, but it will be all right. So as I said, most providers in Europe are switching to all IP and they have different dates. So in Switzerland, the aim is 2017. This is very soon and supposedly next year the whole PSTN network in Switzerland will be shut down and everything will go on IP. In Germany it will happen in 2018, same for Austria. Then uh, France and UK will happen later and it's quite important to say that in France for example there's no dates that has been given. So Orange which is the uh, France Telecom company said we will start in five years to cut down some lines. However, we don't have the date when all the lines will be cut. Anyhow, uh, this is something that um, it is a trend that will happen all over Europe eventually and the questions are more, more or less the same. So, end customers contact us with all kinds of questions and they request answers from us. So, what's going on with my telephone lines? Will I be able to keep calling? Uh, is my system compatible with all IP? My c internet connection is not good enough. How can I do? What should I do? And so on. So lots of questions, lots of worries, and our aim, and that's what we're trying to do today, is to reassure those people and tell them it's okay. Uh, there is a solution. So first thing that we need to tell them, of course, is the end of the PSTN doesn't mean the end of telecommunication services. You will still be able to call. The solution is VoIP. Uh, for some people, VoIP is scary. VoIP means bad quality. Uh, it means call over the internet, meaning not very secure. People can hear me and everything. Uh, so people need to be reassured on this end as well. However, uh, we are in the field for quite a long time. We know that VoIP works. But works, uh, VoIP is not perfect, meaning that um, this network has been developed by a, lots, a small group of geeks, more or less, who said, well, we we're going to try to send voice over the internet protocol, and it worked, and they just went forth without creating any rules. And since then, some rules have been created, but everybody has his own idea of the rules, and everybody does VoIP in another way. So at the end, it doesn't always work well, and we, BeerNet, as gateways, are in the middle, and we try to make it all work together. Work ha VoIP has a lot of advantages, but there are also some cons, and we will discuss them today. So here's what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, first of all, what's the PSTN? So what is this network we want to cut off? Why will we shut it down, so why is the trend all over Europe and probably internationally? 
So what's so wrong with this network? Because we've been using it for a long time and I mean, it's working. What are the issues to be expected and what are the available solutions that are possible for the end clients, therefore for integrators? So first of all, what's the PSTN? So PSTN means Public Switch Telephone Network and it's more or less the network that has been created by the providers, so the historical providers in each country in the 80s and 90s. So those networks are usually, have usually built, they've been built by the different historical providers are, as they were not a private entity. For example, Deutsche Telekom in Germany built the network, which is now based on ISDN lines, uh, thanks to the taxes of all the people and the network now belongs to them, so they can choose whatever they want to do with it. This network is built and is composed of usually two different kinds of technologies, which are the digital technology and the analog te technology. Um, those technologies work quite well. Uh, we can do a lot of calls on them, and um, the idea is to stop using them eventually. So some information regarding the analog and digital network. So with one analog line, as it is a quite basic network with a low connection speed, you can do one call per line. However, it's very great because it's universal, meaning that you can go anywhere you want with your analog telephone, plug it to the local network, and you will be able to make a phone call. This is not the same today with VoIP, where you have to plug your IP phone to your network, you have to um, connect it, configure it, and try to uh, make it work, and sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, so analog lines are for this very nice, and they provide electricity. On the other hand, you have the digital network, which is a network that enables you to transport voice and data, and you can do either two simultaneous calls per line, or 30, depending if you have a BRI line or a PRI line. The very cool stuff about ISDN, it is that it, it has been standardized, meaning that people do it the same way. You have exact rules and you need to follow those rules. Otherwise, well, you don't, you're not compatible with others, with the network. So this is the biggest difference there is between VoIP and ISDN. VoIP is not standardized and there are rules but not everybody follows them. ISDN is very standardized and everybody follows those rules. Of course there are different ways of doing it depending on which country you are. Uh, in Europe we don't have the same technologies as in, as in the US but it works the same, meaning that uh, there are differences in the ISDN just so that manufacturers don't sell their, their solutions everywhere. For example, as Beernet, we need to adapt our solution to sell it on the American market so that uh, we can access the American market directly. But otherwise, it should be the same. So here are the situations today at homes and in businesses. So in homes, usually you have your analog telephone connected to your analog line, and it works well. In businesses, you have usually a PBX connected to the outside via ISDN or analog, and connected to the PBX you have ISDN or analog telephones. And what's going to happen with OLIP is this will not work anymore, you need to adapt. So we will uh, take a look at different examples on how to adapt those situations. So to sum up about the uh, PSTN, you have pros and cons. The pro is that it's universal, it's very easy to access it, and it brings the electricity with it. Meaning, you have an analog line, you plug your telephone to it, you get the electricity. If electricity fails, you still can call because your phone gets the electricity from the analog line. So this is something that is not available on VoIP, for example. However, uh, ISDN has limits in speed, meaning that you cannot 
do lots of services with those uh, with this bandwidth. You can only transport a few a little a little amount of data and voice. It's old tech, meaning that new services are not compatible with it. So VoIP brings interaction with all kinds of services and from one place, your IPBX, you can control everything. Of course, you need to configure it, you need to make sure that everything works. However, when it works, you can integrate everything together and have all kinds of information. One question raise, raises is, uh, well, PSTN works well. Uh, we've been using it for a long time. Uh, the quality is quite good. So why do we want to change? So why put an end to this network? Well, first of all, um, it's something we notice when we take a look at the numbers and what how many lines are sold on the PSNet network in different countries. We notice that the use of PSTN lines is decreasing. On one hand, is this the use of PSTN lines decreasing? On the other hand, the use of high bandwidth lines with fiber and so on is increasing a lot. So providers make way more money with new lines on the new network. So this is one reason. The other reason is the obsolescence of the existing equipment. So manufacturers are now going to the VoIP, meaning everybody is creating new devices compatible with VoIP and not with the old system. So companies who created the hardware needed to make the PSTN network work have stopped creating those uh, equipments and are now doing something else because the demand is not so high anymore. Meaning that the providers have maintenance issues and now that they are creating two different networks, the OLIP network, and they have to maintain the PSTN, it creates lots of problems. They are ma making huge investments in making new lines and new infrastructures and the, and the and on the other hand, maintaining the old network, which is less used than before, is becoming very complicated because manufacturers are switching their way of working and because new engineers are not trained on those old technologies. They are trained on the new technologies, the new network and everything. They don't know PRI and BRI. And finally, they want to modernize that, their network. So a new network brings new services so they can sell more services. So with the new network they can sell more, so why keep the old one which creates too, ma too many problems and doesn't bring as much money as it used to. So for all those reasons there's this all IP trend all over Europe and probably internationally. So this is all good for the providers and everything but uh, still we have lots of questions. For so. Uh, what should I do with my existing equipment? Meaning, I bought my telecommunication system five years ago. I'm very happy with it. It all works well. What I'm hearing is that I need to change it quite soon. I'm not so happy with this, so what should I do? Then, is VoIP reliable? So, what's going to happen, because I noticed that my internet connection is not reliable, it goes down quite often. Uh, does it mean that my internet connection uh, with enabling me to do VoIP, when it goes down I will not be able to call and so on. The other question is, if you don't have a good internet connection, can you do VoIP or not? And finally, what happens when electricity fails? Nowadays, in elevators, for example, if electricity fails, you usually have a phone connected to an analog line which brings electricity so you can still call outside. So for emergency calls, it's very convenient. What happens when it turns to VoIP? So first of all, for existing equipment, those equipments are fax, analog telephones, ISDN telephones, door systems and everything. You can keep those by either getting a VoIP adapter or a VoIP gateway. Adapters are quite uh, convenient for uh, one or two devices, meaning if you only have one fax, 
you don't need to buy a big gateway. You, know, you just can buy an adapter from Cisco, for example. It costs more or less 50 euros, and you can plug your fax to it, which sends it to your IPBX, and you can keep using your fax. However, if you want to connect more than uh, four fax, for example, or lots of analog telephones in a hotel, you will need to use a web gateway enabling more features and uh, designed for that many devices. Then is voice over IP reliable? So if you ask your provider, you will hear yes, and most people will tell you yes. However, it is reliable as long as your internet connection is good enough. If your internet connection is bad, you will have bad telecommunication quality. And your clients and your employees will not be happy. So the solution that we advise here at Bernet is to have flexibility, meaning that if your connection is not good enough, be ready to have a plan B. Uh, if your internet connection goes down, make a GSM backup, for example, so that you can keep calling on the SIM card or something like this. Then the question is for zones where the connection is not good enough. In big countries, uh, in France, Germany, uh, Austria, you have lots of regions where there are so few people that it's not interesting enough for carriers to bring new services to those regions. So the internet connection that they have is bad. So for, for the moment, we don't have any solutions for them, meaning if the providers switch down the network, well, those people just don't have telecommunication. So my idea is that uh, providers will not be able to shut down the PSTN everywhere. They will have to keep some lines. Otherwise, if they do switch the network, then switch down the network, then there's no solution for the moment because nobody will want to uh, um, install fiber all over Germany, even the mountains and so on, because, well, it, it, it's not worth it. So the possible solution will be to do voice over IP over uh, 4G or 5G when we have the right technologies for 5G. So the infrastructures are easier to create 5G, and it might be more worth it than creating new fiber lines. Anyway, they need to find a solution because um, when the telecommunication market was opened by the European Commission in the early 90s, uh, the worry was for those zones, meaning once the market is open, then it's a normal company. It's not the state anymore who's supposed to take care of everybody who will say, well, there's nobody there, but still, they need a good service. So in order to prevent that kind of uh, movement happening, the European Commission said, well, uh, we need to say there is this universal service and providers need to be sure that a fundamental requirement that provider, uh, sorry, so this uh, directive of 2002 says that a fundamental requirement of universal service is to provide users on request with a connection to the public telephone network at a fixed location at an affordable price. Meaning that if you want to be connected to the network, you have a right to that. So if there's no solution for those white zones, so the zones where you don't have good internet connection, then there will be a non-respect of the universal service. So this service is uh, an obligation that historical providers have to respect. Therefore, I believe they will find a solution either by letting some ISDN lines a bit everywhere or by creating a solution on 4G or 5G. However, uh, the providers have not said anything regarding this. And uh, if I have so in information, you will probably see a blog post on, on the BRNet blog appearing soon. So regarding the solutions that you can offer to your client, uh, there are two of them. Either the end client changes his system or he integrates his system with the new technologies. So if he wants to change everything, and let's say that 
your client has an old system which is not compatible with VoIP, then he has to first get new telephone lines compatible with, with, with VoIP, meaning that he has to get a SIP trunk. Then he has to change his PBX, so he's got to take a new IPBX, meaning new IP phones, a new alarm systems and a possible new fax system, which means that it's all going to be quite expensive at the end. If your customer says, well, I want to keep my system and I don't want to spend a lot of money, he still will need to take a new telephone line and a VoIP gateway, enabling, it, enabling him to connect everything to the new telephone line. So if we make a little drawing, it will uh, look like this. Initially, your client has a PBX where his telephones are connected to and his PBX is connected to the outside thanks to an ISDN line. The ISDN line can be a BRI, it can be a PRI, whatever. He can either change everything, so he has to get rid of his PBX, get rid of, of his phones and change everything meaning new phones, new IPBX. The other, other solution is to adapt his existing equipment and connect them to a new SIP trunk, meaning he keeps his PBX, he connects it to the gateway, and the gateway sends the calls from the PBX to the outside. The third solution is to keep part of the equipment, connect it to the IPBX thanks to a gateway, and make sure that everything can work together. In any case, there are lots of opportunities for the integrators, the carriers, and the manufacturers nowadays, thanks to the all IP movement. It means all IP, because of all IP, companies are forced to adapt their telecommunication system. So we have to benefit from them and make a lot of profit thanks to this. However, our best option is to tell the end customer, don't worry, it will happen smoothly and your system will keep working. So there are a few needs. First of all, we need to be aware of the changes and of their consequences, and we need to inform the end customers of those. Because the end customer doesn't know, he hears about it, he sees voice over IP, all IP and everything, He's not sure, and we need to tell him, don't worry, everything will be fine. And if you want a solution, I have the right solution that is depending on what you need. So we need first to take a look at what the client needs and then offer him the right solution. So depending on his need and depending on his budget, especially, we can either offer him to change everything, and for this, integrators should have a reliable IPBX that they know very well, they get support from their IPBX, and then when they chose the IPBX, they can choose the, IP, choose the IP phones and so on. And of course, they need a reliable VoIP partner, so a carrier that makes good voice over IP with good quality. On the other hand, if you want to adapt everything, then you need to choose a reliable and easy voice over IP gateway and a reliable voice over IP carrier. I'm saying an easy and reliable gateway because as you saw in the drawings earlier the gateway doesn't need to do magic it has to connect the ISDN to the voice over IP so the the best gateway does it well so that you don't have quality loss and uh, it's reliable and it's even better if you can configure the gateway very easily and quickly so once again, on the market, you will encounter different technologies, the analog technology, the ISDN, and the SIP. On the SIP part, you have different codecs that are quite important. You have voice codecs, and then you have the T38, which is a fax codec. If you want to do fax over IP, you need to make sure that your gateway supports T38 and that your carrier does as well. BeerNet supports T38, and then we've tested a few carriers, and some support T38, some don't. So those who don't will uh, use G711, and fax doesn't work well with G711. 
it works from time to time, but not always good. So the idea of peer-net gateways and any gateways actually on the market is to connect all those technologies together and make sure you can use the different solutions that you have at the company at the same time and that everything works well. Here at BRNet, we have a certain philosophy that helps us creating good voice, uh, good voice over IP hardware, because all our solutions rely uh, relay on this philosophy, meaning that our gateways, appliances, and so on are cloud managed, meaning that once you've installed the gateway at your client's place, you don't need to uh, to go there to know if it works well or to change the um, the configuration of the gateway, you can simply connect on your cloud account, check if everything is going well, set up alarms, and you will be always aware of your voice over IP installation and make sure that you can re that everything works perfectly. Then we try to make it easy, meaning we have a very in instinctive uh, web interface, and once you've understood how it works, you can easily install our gateways, and if you're trained, you can do it in five minutes. Then, as gateways, we are very open, so we said that we are open and agnostic, meaning we're compatible with everything. As long as your technology is SIP, analog, or ISDN, we are compatible with it. We haven't tried all the IPBX, we haven't tested all the SIP trunks or the ISDN lines all over the world, but we know that we are compatible with them. And finally, we are modular, meaning that depending on your client's needs, you can create the gateway that he needs the most. So if your client says, I have four BRI lines and I want to connect four analog devices, you will take the baseboard and the same baseboard is used for all the gateways and you will put the right modules on this in order to have the solution that fits your client's needs the best. Once you've, tra you're, you've been trained and you know exactly how our gateway works with BRI, for example, you will be able to install FXO, BRI, and whatever, uh, because the configuration is always the same. 